contrary to popular belief, using templates does not initiate the domino effect law. Okay, all right, so you may be asking me, what the heck is the domino law effect, right? And it's exactly what it sounds like, that you are using one law to dispute all your negative items, even though it only pertains to one of your accounts, all right? So you have your medical, your bankruptcy, your judgments, your tax liens, your inquiries, your collections, your charge-offs, your repossession, and you're using one law that pertains to only one or two of your accounts to dispute all of them. So basically the thought process behind this is that it's just going to go and knock down everything around it, right? It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So what you have to understand with the FCRA is that it's a whole thing with different sections in it. And within those sections, now there's laws that pertain to very specific use cases, right? Just like if you went to court, you got in trouble or whatever, you're going to have charges for murder, you're gonna have charges for you know, the hit and run, and there's laws that are specific to both of those situations. You can't get in trouble for your hit and run because of a law that says you can't murder someone. Does that make sense? You get what I'm saying? So if it were like that, then we wouldn't have the whole FCRA and within the FCRA, all these different sections and within these sections, there's all these different laws. It would just be section 609, 611, 623, and 1681, right? You can dispute directly with your creditors. You know, they actually have to investigate and if it's unverified, they have to remove it. Um, if it's reinserted, they have to delete it and uh, consumer disclosures. That would be it, but it's not. Look at this, this is just section 609. There are 601, 602, 603, 604, 605, so on and so forth. So what's the thought process behind that? Well, maybe it's laziness, maybe it's people giving out the wrong information, and no, for all you haters out there, I'm not hating on section 609. I am using it because everybody's familiar with it right? So instead of talking about something that you guys are not familiar with, I'm talking about something that you guys are familiar with so that you understand the logic behind what I'm talking about. Is we only want to dispute our relevant accounts to that specific law, right? See, now with my own letters and my clients, I'm still using the law, but it's the elements in the language that, that embodies the law that I'm indirectly citing. I'm not per saying pursuant to this and pursuant to that. I know that what I am using as a dispute reason has a law that upholds it to remove it, right? So when I'm disputing a medical account, I'm going to use the law that has to do with medical accounts. When I am disputing bankruptcies, I'm going to find the inaccuracies, inconsistencies, violations, all that kind of stuff that upholds the deletion of a bankruptcy, okay? So even though I can put all of my disputes into one letter, they all have different reasons for removal. We're not using one law to remove all these things and hope that it just goes brrrr, right? Okay, so that's what you want to do. What you want to do is figure out what is the reason that this account, this specific item, this one thing that I'm focusing on right now needs to be removed. Is there a law that actually says this needs to be removed because of this? And then we create our dispute reason using the formulas that I taught you, the breakdown, the biggest ammo, the inverted pyramid, the pyramid method, all that kind of stuff. Those are the things that are going to get your negative items removed because you're using the facts directly off the credit report. Because remember, if it were as simple as using one section to remove all your negative items, there wouldn't be all of these subsets within this one section and multiple sections, tons of sections within the entire FCRA or the entire FDCPA. Does that make sense? Now, if this is too much for you, I can understand, okay? It took me a long time to learn this stuff and I had to go through a lot of trial and error and A-B testing and failures to finally succeed and figure out that the way to dispute is by using the facts directly off the credit report. So what do you do right now? Well, here are the recommended steps if you don't know how to actually do what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I have over 300 videos for free right here on YouTube that will explain what you're looking for, how to look for it, how to use it, and how to dispute for removal the right way, okay? Now, maybe you don't want to go and spend 70 hours of your life the same way as I put out 70 hours of my life to figure out how to do this. That's okay. I have things such as the beginner's guide, which I came out with uh, maybe a little over a week ago that'll show you step one, this is what you do. This is what you're looking for on a credit report and this is how to dispute it, okay? So that's why it's called the beginner's guide because I give out a lot of advanced tactics and sometimes you need to take a step back and figure out, well, what do I do from the beginning? The link for that is down in the description. But like I said, there's over 300 videos, tutorials for you to uh, use for free to figure out how to do this. Now, if you're disputing inquiries, that's a whole nother beast, right? Now, I do have the free inquiry removal webinar and there's absolutely no sell, sell uh, excuse me, no sell on it. It's very simply go register, watch it, and it's free. Link is down in the description. And lastly, if this is too much for you, because obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, unless you're watching this years from now, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Things are moving slowly and it has to be done the right way. And maybe you're just dealing with life and um, you don't wanna do this yourself. Maybe you want a professional to do it for you the right way and that's okay too. That's where I come in. So. If you would like to see if I can help you to remove your negative items, then jump on a call with me for a credit sweep, not for advice. I do have a different type of call for a um, for coaching or consulting. Uh, very simply, uh, send me an email about that one. But if you would like me to take over your file, you can use the link down in the description or you can use the link that shows up on the end screen for those of you that watch on Apple TV and Roku TV and all of that. And I will see if I can help you. Now, lastly, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't liked this video, make sure to like. And I know that with the millions and millions of people that have you know not paid their credit cards, and just so you know, last month, and I'm talking about April, it was 13.3 million and then jumped up to 14.7 million people that did not pay their credit cards last month and 3 million additional people that didn't pay their auto loans and 1.6 million people that didn't pay for their mortgages. So I know that you know someone that could use the help of my videos. So if you know someone, I know you do, share this video, share it on your social media, share it via email, share my videos with someone that it's going to help because guys, we are a community and we help each other, all right? So comment, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. I will see you guys later if you have questions about what the heck I'm talking about, the Dama Lola. Um, Rewatch this video and then comment, let me know. And if you would like me to make more videos like this, let me know down in the description or by liking this video. All right, guys, I will see you later and you're about to see the rest of the links. Have a great one.